Today, we'll feature a sensitive topic. Whether you're ushering passengers around as an Uber or Lyft driver or moving food products, Grubhub, Uber Eats, Instacart, or some of the other gig economy businesses, there is one consistent issue that seems to be coming up that is definitely worthy of discussion. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy Tim with another ride-sharing video. Viewer discretion on this one, I totally understand, sympathize with folks that do not want to hear about this shit and decide to scroll on or even unsubscribe from your boy's channel. Hopefully you don't do that, but we're talking about racism. This comes up consistently in the comment section amongst drivers, whether Uber or Lyft or DoorDash or Uber Eats. Folks are stating that they are encountering racism just going about their day trying to earn a little bit of extra income. White drivers as well. So we're going to be talking about that. I'm going to present it to you in regards to a recent video I did on a driver down in South Florida, Omar Ford, 47-year-old gentleman trying to supplement his disability and pension benefits. Now, this guy has taken it to a whole new level. He's wearing a body cam. He's wearing body armor because he's heard about all of this shit that drivers have been dealing with working in the Florida area. As I stated before, last couple weeks, we've had drivers lose their lives, sexually assaulted, and some really bad outcomes for gig economy workers in the Sunshine State. So this guy is taking it to a whole nother level. Nevertheless, in his interview, he stated that racism is his biggest threat. Now, this gentleman is obviously African-American, but if you are a Caucasian driver in a predominantly African-American or low-income area, I invite you, too, to state your comments in this particular video. So we're going to be talking about the likelihood of facing racism, what could lead to it, ways that you could potentially avoid it. But in this, com in this particular gentleman's interview, he stated, I take these measures because racism is my biggest threat. My first experience with food delivery was back in 2016 when I worked for a local pizza shop in Fort Lauderdale. I wore the company's uniform and carried the big red pizza bags, but customers were sometimes hostile. Okay, that's outside of the gig economy, but he continues on. I had a customer call security on me because they saw a big black guy uh, walking up their driveway. They apparently forgot they had ordered food. I received no apologies from the restaurant or customer, which led me to quit. Now, his interview statement pertains to an actual job he had at a pizza restaurant. Now, he's still making deliveries to the homes of strangers and things like that, which is what we do as food delivery drivers. And also in the gig economy, working as Uber or Lyft drivers as well. Now, us rideshare drivers, we don't get out of the damn car. But that doesn't stop folks who have shot at cars for people pulling up on the driveway. You don't have to necessarily get out of your damn vehicle. Some folks are so proactive, so quick to take arms that they may fire at you before you even get out of the car. And anyone driving in America has at least one time pulled up in the wrong driveway or up in someone's driveway to make a turn and go the other direction. We all do that. We all do that. So the fact that some folks can now be shot for doing that is a major concern for people like us who are out in the homes of strangers all the time, or at the very least on the property of strangers. So have you ever seen this become a concerning issue from a racial standpoint? Whereas you want to knock on the door of a customer's house or what you thought was a customer's house and you were met with hostility. Now, in the DoorDash and Uber Eats business, there's a hell of a lot of folks making deliveries to the wrong addresses. A lot of houses are improperly marked. Sometimes there's poor lighting around a property or something like that. So you're on people's property and the chance of you going on a property that's not the one that actually requested the delivery, if you do, if you work in the food delivery business, that's almost guaranteed to happen. And with so many folks eager and willing to protect their property at a drop of a hat, have you had any issues with this? 
And if so, do you believe your skin color? I'm going to ask maybe your gender, but I'm going to assume very little gender issues here. But certainly your nationality could play a part as well. For instance, we know there is a huge negative sentiment in this country towards, say, Muslims. So if you're wearing traditional garb, maybe a turban or something like that, there are going to be folks that do not want you on their property. So have you had any of these type of effects just simply trying to make a damn delivery? Now, some of the stories I've came across in the past featured cases where maybe the wife placed an order for some food and the husband did not know. So all of a sudden the, the driver is knocking on the door or stepping on the porch or walking on the property and the husband is going gung-ho ready to go after the guy thinking the guy is up to something something horrible when he's just simply trying to make a delivery. I had a, another, uh, I believe it was a, a Nigerian woman state that same deal, same deal as Omar Ford is facing. When you're African-American, people just think you're up to no good and she stated that. I wanna know from you guys. Now, I believe if I'm correct, they stated that like 77% of folks in this profession, you know, making this as a way of living, they're minorities. I mean, this is a low paying profession and most of us doing this are minorities. Now, Omar in that article stated that he deliberately tries to go to properties where the folks have money, hoping to get decent tips. Well, being an African-American in wealthy areas historically doesn't go very well for African-Americans. What the hell are you doing in this neighborhood? You know, that's the kind of jargon you often get, generally from law enforcement and things like that, which will lead to another question. Do you feel that you've ever been stopped by law enforcement for being in the wrong damn area while you're trying to make a delivery? And I'm asking that because... Maybe it would help us all to know what the hell did you tell the officer so that they didn't continue fucking with you. We've all had that happen. Most minorities that has been driving for any length of time in their life has had at least one stop where they feel was total bullshit. But I'm not here to bash police. You know what you've been through. We can talk about that shit in the comments. I'm just trying to find out what the hell some of you folks, just like myself, that are in the gig economy are going through. So have you faced, you believe, because obviously the person victimizing you is going to deny this shit all day, but do you believe you face racism from customers or law enforcement or the actual restaurant owners? Maybe you're going into a high-end restaurant where their clientele is rarely people that look like your ass and you come walking in there. Who the hell are you walking in this expensive restaurant? Well, I'm coming to pick up an order. So have you faced it from some of the restaurant owners? This stuff can come from all different levels, folks. So I'm just trying to find that out. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I understand some of you might not want to do this, but it wouldn't hurt to actually list the name of some of those places because I don't want anyone to have a horrible ending trying to simply make a damn living just because their skin color led somebody to take some action that they had no business doing. So if it's a particular restaurant, particular neighborhood that makes it damn near unsafe to do deliveries, by God, state that shit in the comments. You could help everybody out. Just want to ask you folks that because we're hearing this more and more. The more I do this, the more I'm hearing this, is that drivers are claiming that they feel like just simply because of how they look, they're facing all sorts of negative reactions. Now, if I had to give some tips, don't stand out. Do not stand. Just like when we're talking about avoiding crime, I often state, if you don't want to be eaten, do not look like food. Driving fancy cars do not only attract nefarious characters, it also attracts nefarious police officers and cops. Rims, you know, music, lots of chrome, candy paint, shit like that. You legally have the right to do whatever the hell to your vehicle that you want, as long as it's within law. The fact that you want to soup your vehicle up should not make folks with badges fuck with you. But that's not the real world. We know in the real world that happens all the time. So if you're out 
you know, driving around in a fancy ass car making DoorDash deliveries or ushering passengers from point A to point B. It can happen. So understand that when you're doing this, the last thing you want to do is stand out. Another thing that makes you stand out, multiple heads in the vehicle. Certainly when they're young folks, 20, 30 years of age, three or four heads in the vehicle. I've actually heard an officer state, if you got three or four people in the car, chances are one of them have, has a gun, one of them has drugs, or one of them has a warrant. Pretty much admitting it's a fucking fishing expedition. So if you're out doing food delivery uh, runs and you have somebody else in your vehicle, understand multiplying the number of occupants in your vehicle sometimes can attract attention. So it's things like that. Obviously, you want to have your vehicle up to cold. You don't want to have headlights that have mismatched brilliance, you know, lights and plate light out. The same type of bullshit you might get screwed around with just out in society. Well, if you're actually doing ride share or DoorDash deliveries, that same shit can attract attention. So just understand all of that will likely make you draw the ire of law enforcement. Let me know in the comments, too. I'm sure this probably has happened to some drivers getting stopped for bullshit reasons. We just want to make it so that we can earn this low-ass amount of money with, as less, with the least amount of drama as possible. Not only do we have Uber and Lyft constantly trying to reduce how much we earn, but now we got customers fighting to get free shit, free trips, free food, now you got law enforcement, you got customers being fucking rich. This is a horrible business to some degree. We want to try to make it as hospitable as possible in some of these areas. State your case in the comments. As always, this is a this one I don't like to come to you with, but I'm seeing it more and more every damn video I do. It's your boy Tim. Subscribe to the damn channel. And hopefully I'll come to you next time with a more positive video.